I'm just going to start broadcasting. All right, looks like we got the first high for the day. Hi, Ernesto. All uh, right, let's go ahead and start. I guess everybody is here. So, right, all good. Uh, hello, everyone. Uh, very good morning to you all. Welcome to the webinar from Zoho and Sensible Inc. over here today. Uh, thank you for joining us uh, for the session, and uh, it's a pleasure to host you all today. I believe many of you uh, present here would be a Zoho Inventory user, and I believe, and I know that there are a few. Uh, other attendees who are not a user as well, who might be new to all these different apps uh, over here today. Um, so what we'll be discussing over today in this uh, session is going to be about the application of AI in back office automation. Uh, so, um, you know, so we'll be looking in more into how to increase your productivity with AI based automation while managing transactions in Zoho uh, as, a, as an inventory tool and uh, our auto management tool. Uh, AI is an important tool in today's world, and uh, we know why. AI helps imitate human behavior, and uh, with the latest advancements, uh, we are able we are able to control uh, the the errors uh, which which it is prone to, and uh, you know we are advanced in every level in when it comes to AI. So uh, we are trying to apply this into our everyday lives. Uh, so you know there are even uh, you know apps, mobile apps, which use AI to find out. You know, just just should should that uh, object over there, it'll tell you if you will look at Google Lens and so on. So it'll tell you what it is. So we are we are looking at uh, such a solution. Uh, we're looking more of an advanced solution which can um, read data and so. So today, like let's look at Capiche, an AI-based tool from Sensible, which can help you manage your transactions better and automate your various steps, uh, manual steps that are taken care of. Um, you know, when it comes to uh, transaction recording uh, or a vendor invoice or build recording uh, in Zoho inventory, uh, you know. So, all your questions, uh, so you, just to know your, uh, you know, your uh, platform that you have, you're attending on, it is Zoho Showtime. Um, a Showtime is uh, basically a, a webinar platform from Zoho. So, we have hosted this uh, session on Zoho Showtime. So you will find your questions bar onto the left of your screen, and you will find your chat button uh, onto the left of your screen again. So there you can post anything uh, like a chat, uh, which will be visible to everybody. So when it comes to questions, please make sure you post it, post them in the questions bar. Uh, we will try to answer the questions on the go, and also we will try to uh, take up the questions at the end of the session. So if it is something that we would like to discuss in detail, then we'll definitely take it up to the end of the session, towards the end of the session, because this is the reason because, uh, you know, that will help us elaborate it. And uh, basically everybody can make use of that uh, question and anything related to it. Uh, even if you don't get it answered, please don't, uh, please don't feel bad about it. I mean, we will definitely, uh, we will definitely send out uh, the answers via email, but mostly we will be looking at all the questions today over here in the session. So thanks for your participation and enjoy the session. Um, I would like to introduce uh, myself. So these are the speakers for today, myself and uh, Murugapal. So uh, myself, I'm Salman from Zoho team and I've been working as a solution architect uh, in the early days of my career with Zoho. Now I manage the marketing analysis and also lead the customer engagement marketing for Zoho inventory as a product. Uh, associating with this supply chain industry has helped me gain hands-on knowledge on financial and process-based automation that is essential for every business these days. Uh, this helps me to drive businesses um, that are, help drive businesses that are in need of proper supply chain industry, uh, strategy and in the right direction and get the most out of their business, uh, you know, to optimize it and identify and solve their major pain points. Uh, we, while talking about Murugappan, uh, Murugappan, Mr. Murugappan is an expert in the inventory and finance automation. Uh, process. Um, he's a dis director and bis of business and technology in Sensible Link. Uh, so he has been working on um, improving software products and building software products uh, along with its uh, you know process efficiency and AI and ML based NLP. 
He's an expert in contextual machine learning technology and has also performed uh, the lead research and analysis role for integrated process automation technologies. Being an evangelist, uh, he's also a digital evangelist in procure to pay automation and smart invoicing. Uh, he's also a thought leader in a digital transformation technology and journey today. Uh, so I'm just going to hand over the session to um, uh, Murugapan. So Murugapan is going to walk you through the rest of the session today. And I will come in whenever necessary to help you out on any sort of questions at all. Thank you. Yes, Murugapan, so I'm going to give you the session. I'm going to transfer the controls. Thank you. Thank you very much, Salman. All right, you're good to go. OK. Hello, everyone, um, and welcome to this session. My name is Murugappan, and uh, I'm a technical and a business evangelist here at Sensible with 25 years of uh, experience in the information technology industry. And I help organizations in enhancing their business processes through various digital transformation strategies. I, I once again uh, thank each and everyone present here for spending your valuable time with us today. And I hope this session will be very informative and an uh, interesting session for you all. Let's see uh, what we have in our agenda today. First, I would like to talk about Sensible and its uh, partnership with Zoho Corporation. Um, next, I will talk about the, the current challenges most organizations are going through today in their back office environment due to the uh, manual data entry and data processing. Next, I will talk about the importance of the artificial intelligence based automation solution and how these robust technologies are currently uh, helping these organizations in overcoming those challenges. The next would be more relevant to all the participants here, um, which is about our uh, intelligent process automation solution called Captish and its integration with Zoho Inventory. And uh, finally, I have a case study to present um, in which you know, I'll talk about the very recent implementation that we have done in one, for one of our customer in the Asia Pacific, and also the before and after captish scenario. OK. At the end of the session, you will all know how easy it is to integrate Zoho Inventory along with Captish. A very few simple steps you can get integrated. And you'll also know how to intelligently extract data from vendor invoice and to generate the bills automatically without keying in any data. I mean, you know, it's an end-to-end -end automation. You will, you will come to know how easy it is. And uh, you will also know a little bit about the automation technologies that are in uh, existence today and how these technologies are helping the organizations. And uh, you will also know how what are the values that, that we are bringing into the table for the back office operations. Sensible is an information technology company incorporated in the year 1999 with a focus to provide a very simple solution for complex business problems. And uh, that's what we do exactly today. Uh, we are headquartered in New Jersey, United States of America, and uh, our offshore development center is in Chennai, India. Uh, we are an ISO 9001 and CMMI Level 3 certified organization for our quality and information security. And today we help uh, many organizations in, uh, in, in, in making them stay uh, um, ahead of the competition in their respective industry and also to keep their uh, workspace modern by leveraging their IT expenditures by leveraging their IT expense, uh, uh, IT spendings um, in making use of all these latest technologies such as artificial intelligence, machine learning, robotic process automation, cloud computing, and many others. 
And we also use all these latest technologies as an integral part of our solution um, that we offer today to our customers. And I'm, I'm very glad to say that uh, we have partnered with Zoho last year. Zoho Corporation is well known uh, for its wide range of products, which caters every single need of an organization today. And um, Zoho Corporation is also a prominent player in the SaaS-based business software management market with 60 million users worldwide. We have a good synergy uh, in our thought process and also uh, we complement each other with our uh, solutions which made us join our hands together and move forward to serve the industry, to serve, to, to serve the organizations. Uh, for the benefit of the audience who, who, who doesn't know what uh, uh, Zoho Inventory is, who are not currently having Zoho Inventory, I just want to mention that Zoho Inventory is an order management software solution uh, which helps organizations to manage their orders effectively, not only orders, uh, it also helps manage uh, the inventory, the operations, and it also helps uh, us to track the movement of the stock in the warehouse and many other features. Okay. Um, See, the front office has, has been undergoing tremendous amount of digital transformation in the past two decades. However, there were not much transformation happened in the back office operations. Uh, organizations started, started to realize that their front office investments are not going to uh, bring in any true values unless otherwise they expand their effort in the back office operations as well. The main challenge what I see today is the, the traditional back office is more of a operational or transactional oriented rather being customer oriented. I would say that similar to front office, even the back office has to be customer centric in order to yield better uh, return on investments. Based on various researches and survey, um, I have a few metrics here to discuss about, to talk about. The first one is about the, uh, the amount of manual effort that are going through today. Undoubt undoubtedly, there are complex processes and wide variety of tasks that are being performed in the back office. And uh, surprisingly, 90% of them are still manual. The next one is about the errors. We all know that uh, all the industries are regulated and some industries um, have high, high regulation imposed by the government. For such industries, the data accuracy is paramount important and they cannot afford to have the error rate um, anything more than 0.5 percentage. Again, this number differs from industry to industry, but uh, as, as a standard, you know, on an average, 0.5 percentage is acceptable. Um, but the metric, whatever I ha I have here, is three percentage, right? Three percentage uh, of the errors are being recorded, are found in the back office operation today. That's a lot, and you know, it's almost six times than the um, accept acceptable number. So uh, obviously, you know the either directly or indirectly, all the organizations are uh, paying heavy penalty because of these errors. And all these errors will lead them to a severe business impact and, uh, and a high risk. The next is about the cost. Uh, when our people do monotonous job, you know, repetitive job day in, day out, the errors and the delays are inevitable. And these errors and delays not only prolongs the process life cycle, it also increased the cost by means of cost of correction. I know certain companies, you know, I, 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 have, I, I know a company uh, which still do a lot of manual processing of data and keep their error rate less than 0.5 percentage. But they do this by practicing double entry data, the double data entry system. You know, they deploy the same team 
one more time. You know, it's, it's equivalent team, and uh, they basically increase the manpower to to achieve that uh, data accuracy. Again, the, you know, they end up employing a lot of people. That means they are paying a lot of money. So, sixty percentage of the operational budget is being consumed by manual processing today. And finally, about the customer satisfaction. So everything, the errors, the cost, the delays, everything boils down to customer dissatisfaction. And 60% of the customer dissatisfaction originates in the back office. Okay, for the benefit of the audience um, who are not from the technology background, I would like to touch a little bit upon, you know, what is automation all about? I would classify automation into two different types. One is robotic process automation. The other one is artificial intelligence based automation. First, the robotic process automation is, is about, you know, it, it basically mimics the human intelligence. And uh, it can be an assistant to human by doing the repetitive task, by doing that monotonous task that human does every day. And uh, it is structured and rule based. Now the question comes up like, you know, uh, you, you may be wondering then how it is different from our regular application, which is which is running in our machines in web, right? Those are also structured and rule based. Robotic process automation is a program which actually acts as a user to those applications. We don't need to touch anything those on those applications. We can have this program go and open up the application, type in something, fetch data. So assuming in a scenario where where a work where an employee has to spend a couple of hours to op, to go through 10 different application grab data and generate a report we can have this done using a robotic process application uh, automation application it exactly does the same thing what user is going to do it, it opens the application it types in the data in the field and grabs the data and you know um, generates the report and and publish the report so you know it's it's more to it's more like Mimicking, you know, it mimics the human intelligence. On the other hand, artificial intelligence based automation can simulate human intelligence. That's very powerful. You know, it, it simulates human intelligence. It can uh, eventually it's going to replace the humans and uh, the, the days are not very long and it's, it's already starting to you know, happen. And it uses unstructured data and develops its own rules and logics. It, it generates its own code. Uh, and you know, artificial intelligence-based automation, basically the artificial intelligence is nothing without its subset. The word artificial intelligence is just an umbrella. It's nothing without its subset technologies such as machine learning, natural language processing, machine vision, and there are many. But I've just taken these two because we predominantly use these two technologies in our, uh, in our applications. What is machine learning? You know, uh, machine learning is a technology which uses uh, conventional statistical methods to create patterns out of a you know, huge set of data to predict the future. And on the on the other hand, natural language processing is a is a technology which can understand regular human language, like how we speak, how we type. It can understand. It can get the data and extract the context and the intent of the user. And you know, and and react accordingly. I don't want to get into more details, but I just want to mention one more thing. When we put RPA and intelligent, uh, this artificial intelligence based automation together, we call it as intelligent process automation (IPA). You know, which is an end-to-end -end automation, it becomes more powerful. Okay. As I mentioned earlier, organizations have started to realize how important this AI-based solutions are for their back office and started to adopt these technologies in their back office uh, automation. I would like to give you a few examples. Uh, a mortgage company today uses uh, artificial intelligence to, to assist their underwriters in making right decision and quick decisions to process the loan application. And another example is, you know, the human resource department in an organization uses AI technology to detect the employee attrition uh, so that the, the HR 
team can proactively uh, keep the employees happy and uh, also to retain them. And uh, the third example I would say is, you know, uh, a finance department of an organization uses a lot of AI today um, to, to just, you know, um, to have a more accurate financial forecasting report in real time. You know, the, the management team no need to wait for days or weeks to get a, a report, not just a report, more accurate financial forecasting that too in real time. So based on the various, um, I know the, the service conducted recently with among large corporations, you know, large enterprises uh, who are all front runners in terms of adopting these technologies, uh, we understood that um, uh, that you know th there are uh, significant amount of benefit they, are, they have got and uh, they got positive uh, impact on operational metrics through this automation and some of the significant benefits are 40 to 50 percent savings in cost and a 44 percent increase in operational you know efficiency uh, whereas you know um, 46 percentage of their task and processes are already automated and uh, the organizations are started to get good insights to make decisions with real-time dashboards and uh, the other reports. Okay. Captish, as I mentioned earlier, Captish is an uh, intelligent process automation software, which uh, which helps us eliminate mundane tasks and also uh, to increase productivity. Uh, Captish is a SaaS based solution hosted in um, uh, AWS Cloud. Um, and it uses both RPA and artificial intelligence based automation. Um, Captish is customizable. It has customizable workflow, and uh, we can customize it based on the customer's needs and wants uh, with its tailor made approach. Uh, and Captish can understand the context from the uh, uh, from from the document, from all the statements. It can go through the document. It can extract the meaning out of it. We don't just extract data. We extract meaningful data out of the document using the natural language processing technology, which I was discussing earlier, which is again a subset of uh, artificial intelligence. Again, Captish has an ability to extract data from a document and compare it with other documents to, to ensure that the extraction is right and you know all the data are being you know um, extracted right um, in in the case of um, accounts payable department uh, the vendor invoice data has been extracted and it can be compared with the purchase order that the, that was sent out earlier to one vendor to ensure that you know whatever we have asked for, we have received it and we are paying for that. And it can be also compared with the delivery note um, while receiving the goods. So once all this data matches between three uh, three different documents, that means you know we have a right data there and no room for errors. And. Uh, Captish can be integrated with any third-party applications such as uh, um, CRM and SAP that are available today. Um, one such integration is with Zoho, Zoho Inventory, where uh, the, the, the bills can be generated automatically without any human intervention, without typing in any data. Okay, here's a solution overview of our Captive solution and also its integration with Zoho Inventory. Uh, Captive basically has two different roles. One is administrator. The other one is the regular user, accounts, you know, uh, accounts payable user. The administrator of the system will have ability to um, train the system with, um, you know, uh, they can upload multiple invoices, you know, in various formats and train the system. Once the system is trained and ready, the accounts payable department user can log in and start using the system by uploading it. But you know, there are three different ways um, through which Captish can receive invoice documents. Number one, Captish can listen to an email inbox and uh, 
um, and you know uh, classify the documents what's been received if it's an invoice document it can grab it and start extracting it there is no manual work needed there number two uh, it can be posted in a location which is shared and uh, accessible by captish number three the user can get into captish portal and upload all the documents you know in one shot like bulk upload on, on an everyday basis or you know once to um, once in a day or twice in a day, they can just upload all the documents uh, in, into Captage portal. And as soon as Captage receives the document, it will start its extraction based on its training that it's got earlier from the administrator. It start extracting the contents from the, the vendor invoices. And uh, once the extraction is done, it goes to Zoho inventory to fetch the PO detail of that particular you know, invoice, of the respective invoice. And it started, it's, it compares with the purchase order. At this stage, three things can happen. Number one, it can get exactly matched with the purchase order. In that case, there is no question asked, right? So it just goes and generate the bill in Zoho inventory. It's, it's ready to go, that's all. And number two, in case there are any mismatch in the quantity, that can happen because you know the PO could be for 100 different pieces and uh, uh, the vendor would have delivered in different phases. In the first phase, they, they, they deliver 50 pieces and they just only invoice for 50. So in this case, there is a mismatch, right? Um, 150. So in this case, you know it, it just stops there, but it completes the extraction. It just alerts the user that you know a validation is required there. Right, so it's alert the user. They just go in and see. You know, the, the all the fields will be highlighted in red. Uh, if they see that is reasonable, they just have to click one button. Say that go ahead and generate the bill. That's all. It will go and generate it in this over inventory. The third thing, um, it's very rare. Again, there are chances. What if the vendor sends the invoice with the watermark in the, behind their you know um, document? If, if, what if it's their format? Captish tries to clean up all the watermark as much as possible and successful so far, but there are very less chances that the extraction could, can be and uh, the exception can go wrong. But again, based on the confidence level, we just stop there and we, we um, ask the user to go and validate that. Once it's validated, I mean, if it is wrong, they have an option to just edit that one particular line and update the data. They don't need to go through you know, the whole document and enter everything manually. Just one thing, you know, they have to edit and change the data and click on generate bill. Then that will, that will go and generate the bill. And uh, this is a very simple solution that we have created, which adds a lot of value for the business that saves a lot of time, avoid a lot of errors. So yeah, that, that's pretty much about our solution here. I have a video to play here, uh, which also showcases whatever I have explained to you now. You know, you can see that visually.
Okay, well, Rapan, so we can go ahead with the next sure. slide. Thank you. Yes, I can uh, started seeing messages that you know they are exactly watching the video. That's good. So I hope you know you would have gone through the same thing. Whatever, whatever I have explained you, it is very simple, straightforward to get registered and just to you know in, um, uh, get integrated with the uh, Zoho inventory. And it's very simple to upload and um, um, you know verify the content if it is required and generate the bills. It's very simple, straightforward. Okay, I would like to talk about um, the most recent implementation that we have done for one of our customer in South uh, East Asia. Um, so cli our client is a, a leading ready-made clothing manufacturing company in Asia. And uh, they have three, dif three different plants in the country. And I know that they produce like 75 million pieces every year. And they, uh, they have employed around 350 plus people. So before Captish, the scenario was, on average, 1,500 vendor invoices are processed in a month uh, per plant. That's a lot. And uh, in total, across three different plants, the total, uh, total of 54,000 invoices were processed every year. So even if we take you know, 20 minutes, Approximately, they, they, they were taking 20 minutes to uh, to process on an average, I'm saying, on an average, some invoice can be big and some invoices can be small. But on an average, they were spending 20 minutes to to type in all this information into Zoho inventory. And also, you know, before typing in, they have to compare it with the PO. So they were spending 20 minutes and uh, all, that worked out to 18,000 man hours, which they had to spend to do this task every uh, every year which again you know works out to a cost of 120k they were spending um, 120k to do this work so after the capture scenario 95 percentage of the operational time to generate the bill got reduced right it just take less than a minute to process this so th there was a significant amount of uh, time saved there and so the cost and 99.5 percentage reduced error rates, and 100 percent automation achieved with the two-way matching. I mean, you know, it gets matched with PO, and 80 percentage improved process efficiency. Not much meetings, no phone calls, you know, not not uh, exchange of there is there were no exchange of emails. So after after capture scenario, it's all up automated, and uh, the the customer has seen. A significant um, amount of benefit there okay we almost came to an end of this presentation um, soon we will be starting our q a session uh, please visit zoho marketplace and search for captish to get started with your back office automation and i wish everybody should uh, make use of this at uh, this intelligent process automation tool to have operational efficiency in your back office um, to save the, the time and the cost. And here are our contact details. You can contact us anytime and we'll be very happy to assist you. You can also visit our website for more information on our products and solution. Over to you, Salman. All right, thank you, Murugappan. That was an insightful session. Uh, thanks a lot for your uh time today with us no problem it's my pleasure yeah so and uh, everybody else too i mean everybody who is here with us today uh thank you all for your uh, prompt response to the polls which we had which we were doing in between and uh yeah that is interesting to see all that uh polls and your answers to the polls so that will help us uh you know understand what kind of audience we had today and uh, how we can uh, bring in more and more such webinars and um, you know to help you out uh, so in this in this session today we will be we had been discussing about ai uh, much about automation uh, a lot about uh, processing uh, you know pay, paper formats and so on so uh, i believe you should all have some questions regarding the application right today so let us uh, make sure uh, we answer this answer them all uh, so if you have any questions at all, do feel free to post them over here in the questions bar. 
So uh, we will make sure to answer them all one by one. So even if it is any complex questions also do feel free to post them. We will take them up in detail. We will discuss it over here. Uh, we have enough time. Yeah, we do have enough time to uh, help you out on that. So we have close to 18 minutes uh, of to wind up the session. So we have uh, one question from Wayne Forrest. So Wayne Forrest is asking how is Skeptish different from the auto scan already available in Zoho books? Uh, well, uh, Wayne, actually, auto scan is a different functionality uh, that is available in Zoho books uh, compared to Keptish. Uh, so if you look at it, auto scan, it only scans the total value of that particular bill or invoice. While uh, Keptish as a product, uh, as, a, as a solution will help you, uh, you know, itemize each and every item inside your uh, scan. When you scan the uh, particular uh, bill, uh, say if you simply scan the bill, uh, you will be able to itemize each and every uh, unit of, uh, I mean, each and every line item inside your bill uh, so that it can, uh, you know, categorize the tra transaction based on an item level, on an item level and up upload it into your system. Moreover, if you look at auto scan functionality, if you say if it is a very huge uh, bill or something, you, uh, you know, even if it's a very huge bill, you will have a tough time when it comes to auto scan features, uh, which, which is already available uh, in the module. Uh, but uh, this is something different. This is more uh, much of a complicated system ma made much simple. So uh, as in, you know, uh, if it is a very large file or something, uh, the system can process it in, in a very small time. And um, would you like to add anything more on this behalf? No, I think you, you covered it. Uh, so. All right, perfect. Uh, so then we have another question from Paul. Paul, Paul is asking what is the pricing of the application. So do you have a particular pricing at the moment? Uh, we have different uh, tires, Paul, and um, we have a free tire to start with. You know, we want people to actually get used to this application, so they can start with a free tire for 15 days and process as as much as uh, invoices they can. And uh, and the 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 largest one is per organization that is in Zoho inventory, you know, per organization, if you want to process, if you have like 30,000 invoices to process uh, in a year, we have a package there, which would cost around 1,500 US dollars per year. Um, and that's that's for one organization with Zoho. Awesome. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to share a link uh, in the chat box. And uh, just to add, sorry to interrupt you, Salman. We have other also. This is the biggest package, what I said. If yeah, exactly. numbers are small, again, we have two different uh, you know packages there. I can send you the details. Uh, yeah, I'm actually dropping in the link uh, to the marketplace listing of Captiche. So if you go to that link, you should be able to find more information about Captiche and also you know the pricing details. So we do have the pricing in the marketplace listing, right, Yes. All right, all right. So then Wayne is asking, can you use Captiche to upload sales orders? Um, uh, Wayne, if, it would be better if you would post the questions on the questions bar instead of the chat, uh, so that you know we will be able to track it one by one, and uh, even if necessary, we can project it on the screen as well. So uh, I would suggest you post it over there. It is right above your chat box. Okay. And so, right. you know, if we have the question here, that is, you can you use Captiche to upload sales orders from your sales partners? Uh, I understand this is more of the sales invoices, right? This regarding more yeah. of sales I mean, for account. Yeah, it's more of an order. So let's say if the sales uh, is done by the sales partners, uh, so so let's say they get a purchase order, uh, more like a drop shipment. Let's say let's take a drop shipment scenario over here. A uh, drop shipment, my uh, retailer will be my uh, person who will take a, uh, take up the order for me, you know. So I am actually just drop shipping the product or I'm shipping the product on behalf, his behalf. So let's say the purchase order is given to his, uh, given to my my um, salesperson or my retail uh, retail guy uh, from the uh, particular organization as a per purchase order. So that purchase order might be my sales order, would be my sales order. Right. So they might pass it over to me. Uh, and what I'll, uh, what I'm going to do, so I guess the question is more like, can I process that inside my sales order module easily? Uh, actually, no, this uh, currently we, we don't have a solution for, uh, the, uh, you know, the, the sales organization, but soon, uh, that that's on our roadmap. We will definitely having 
more solution for account receivable and other things. Currently, it's only for accounts payable. We just get started with that, and it's it's mainly yeah. for accounts payable here uh, with the Zogo integration. But Captish on on a whole, yes, it has it has those ability. But here with Zogo integration, you know, we have the um, limitation to accounts payable for now. Okay. okay. So actually, yeah, it's true. I mean, uh, so Captish do have the ability to uh, have multiple users, where uh, you know you can have the user to uh, to have a you know a separate uh, user login uh, where he can just drop the order. For example, in this case, if the salesperson is going to have uh, you know like a a user interface where he can drop that purchase order from his vendor, sorry, from his customer. Then he can directly uh, that that will be directly uploaded into your system, right? I mean, so they can directly manage it. So uh, that part is yet to be uh, that part is under development, right? Right, that's correct. That's in our roadmap. Soon it will be available with Zogo. See, we we are we are currently doing um, a lot of um, features to complement you know uh, Zoho products, not only for accounts receivable, also for you know books and many other things. So soon everything will be available in the market. Marketplace. Awesome. Awesome. So, uh, Wayne is asking another question. Does the image of the bill get uploaded into Zoho? So, do you keep the bill inside Captish as a solution? I mean, as a product, or would you actually push it through the APIs or something into uh, Zoho inventory? Say, you know, we, in Zoho inventory, there is a field uh, where for attachments. So, this attachment can hold files uh, like a picture of the bill or invoice. Uh, I mean, the vendor invoice or even the invoice module, you have that functionality. So basically, I guess Spain Forest question is about having the attachment field, uh, you know, filled up, I mean, associate attached with that uh, particular image, uh, which Wayne might be, uh, you know, fetch, fetching into Captish. So that it will be up, updated over there along with the bill creation. Um... Actually, no. We don't. We don't uh, save any bills. Um, the, the image of the bill or image of the invoice uh, in Zoho inventory. Uh, as soon as we get the invoice document, we store it temporarily in our system uh, until the bill is being generated. Once the bill is generated, we just erase all the information from our system to ensure that you know we we don't keep unnecessary system. Once the bill gets generated. In this over inventory, we don't keep it. But to answer your question precisely, we don't store any other image as an attachment in Zoho inventory. I hope that answers your question, Wayne. All right. Um, I guess that answers it. So then we have another question from, oh, yeah, thank you, Jason. Thank you for being here today. Um, so we have another question from Tiffany. So Tiffany asks, how do you work with manufacturers or vendors uh, to track availability? What technology do they have to have? Uh, well, if you are, if you, Murugan, if you'd like to have the have a look at the questions, uh, please refer to them from the chats because uh, I believe most of our users here are posting them uh, on sure. the chat. Sure. So, uh, yeah, I'm also saying that. Uh, yeah, exactly. Same okay. question. Manufacturers and vendors to track the availability. Uh, currently, we don't have any such future. We don't track the availability of the product. I hope uh, the question is uh, uh, more about um, you know, working with manufacturers on, on finding out the um, stock availability with them. Currently, you know, we, we, we don't expand this. Uh, we don't have that extended future here. This more of extracting the data from the invoice and generating the bills. Or some solution is very limited here, whatever I have showcased. Okay. All right. All right. Um, so I guess that answers it. Uh, so so then, you do have so you might have so let's say if Zoho inventory comes up in the future with a manufacturing, uh, you know, module. Uh, I I believe uh, Sensible would be happy to support it, right? Sure, sure, definitely. As 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 a partner, yes, we would like to travel with you and support all your customers by extending all the possible way, however, however you know, we can support, yes. Because because the Zoho is actually working on an advanced manufacturing module, which sure. is in work for some, some time. Um, and it should be uh, up in a year or so is what we think. So it's going to take some time, but yeah. Sure, sure, Salma. So then uh, Wayne has another question. Uh, yeah, Wayne says, uh, 
not not really when it is not a question but when says that he would like to have that document also uh, made available under that attachment field but yeah it makes sense yeah. uh, maybe we can look into that uh, that enhancement uh, it shouldn't be much of a change uh, i sure. believe uh, yeah definitely we can do that see every fortnight uh, we have a minor release and we do a major release uh, uh, once in a month so uh, definitely we know we put that in um, in our backlog and we can get this done it's a, it's a straightforward simple ask and you know it's, it's it makes sense we can do that exactly exactly sounds good all right um, so um Murkip, and, uh, while talking about this uh, do you think there are any specific industries or domains uh, to which it can be uh, specifically used for or something like do you think there's something like that no our solution is domain agnostic you know okay. it works with any type of domain right all, all the financial accounts payable works very commonly in all the domains so our solution is domain agnostic so so if the customer would like to make any small changes in that transactional uh, you know format or anything like that does it does it uh, would that, uh, would oh, yeah. that be acceptable by i mean would that be uh, would you know sensible be able to uh, accept that change and uh, make yeah, the changes sure, sure, definitely no, definitely we, we can do that as i said you know captish is customizable um, uh, with its tailor made approach and we can customize and the SaaS based application, whatever we have developed, developed is a tenant based model, right? So uh, we can uh, we can have this customization created separately and have that running. We are happy to do that. Sounds good. Sounds good. Uh, well, so then we have another question from Emily. Uh, Emily is saying in Zoho, can you insert QR code directly onto the item page so we can print it out? But now I have to right click create QR code and then print it. So good. Uh, Emily, let me just quickly check on this. Uh, just give me a quick moment here. Is this related to Zoho, yeah, Zoho inventory? inventory? Yes. So actually. can we insert a QR code uh, um, in the purchase order? Is that what you are referring to, Emily? Yeah, Emily. So, could you be more clear about it? Okay. Yeah, purchase order. Okay. Uh, well, actually, we do have an option to create QR code in the invoices. So, uh, I believe uh, you would like to generate it right away on the go. Uh, I mean, if you look at the latest QR code functionality which we have bought in uh, in Zoho inventory, it helps you create a QR code of that particular transaction. It's mostly in the sales transaction at the moment. Um, are you asking whether it is possible to bring in into the purchase modules and the item page separately? Or if you would like to elaborate it a little, little more, that should be more helpful for me. Try to print QR code on the item pages. Uh, okay, I believe this is regarding the new feature which we have bought in that is, uh, that, that is basically where you can create an item and then associate a QR code to it. So this is, um, so you would like to, you would like to automate that and then print it out. Uh, I mean, okay, now I have to click, right click, create QR code and then print out, print it out. Mm, I'll, I'll have to check on this Emily because I believe uh, creating a QR code is a process which has to be done manually, but then I'm not sure if it, there's a bulk option to print it out or something. Uh, maybe we can take this off uh, of this uh, session and uh, we can discuss that in detail uh, because there are a certain confusion. There, there are a few confusions around surrounding this uh, particular uh, you know, topic. So that is that includes a lot of uh, uh, that includes a few like uh, you know whether it is on the transaction module or if it is on the item page. I understand it's on the item page, but uh, then. Uh, it is. Uh, it has to be generated and printed out. So th there's a few more questions that I would like to know. I, I believe uh, it is better that if we take it off of the session. So I will definitely reach out to you on this. Right. Thank you, Emily. So, Murugan, um, we were. I believe we were talking something about uh, you know three-way matching, right? I mean something. Right. I mean, PO invoice to delivery note. Uh, what what can you explain that a little bit more, little more like what does that mean sure see it, it all starts with the purchase order right mm -hmm. um, a, a company an account uh, payable uh, 
uh, basically creates a purchase order vendor uh, and send it, sends it to the vendor and vendor send back the invoice and also they deliver the product right and yeah. while receiving the products there will be a delivery note created that will be um, that will be accepted by the um, uh, in the gate of the warehouse right that's a yes. delivery note that's been generated to accept those goods in the uh, in the warehouse so now we have three different documents it started with purchase order then vendor raised the invoice and there is a delivery note created um, for for those goods to get entry into the warehouse so mm -hmm. the value in between these three document should match because these three are related documents. So we ensure that the, 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 the data in these three document gets matches to, to, you know, to achieve the high level of accuracy. Got it, got it, understood, understood. But here understood. in the solution, we just match it with the PO, but we also do three-way matching. But here with availability, we just do you know, uh, two-way matching. Okay, got you, got you. And uh, th th there are certain cases, you know, people have said that uh, we have our, um, uh, we generate the PO in our vendors platform. So we don't generate PO inside Zoho inventory, right? We have also gone through such cases. In that case, we don't do um, two-way mapping also. We just extract the content and based on the uh, confidence level, either we go ahead and generate the bill or we just keep the, you know, ask the user to come and verify quickly. Very fine in the sense, you know, just look over and click the button. It will generate. We are flexible for all the options. Okay, sure. So, um, well, uh, do we have any more questions uh, uh, to the audience? Uh, do we have any more questions? Uh, because we have almost reached our time limit, but I uh, would be happy to extend uh, if you would have any questions. We'd be happy to answer them. Not a problem. Oh, sorry yeah. about that. Uh, all right. Uh, what technology is there? I did answer that. Did you answer that, Murugan? Yes, I did answer that for, yes, uh, did answer that for, for vendor tracking. Um, as I said, you know, um, to track the vendor, I, I'm still not getting the question correctly, but I assume that you are asking whether we can track the availability, I mean, you know, uh, with, with the inventory, whatever the manufacturers and the other vendor has, right? Okay, see, um, there is no way we can get connected to the uh, manufacturer's inventory unless otherwise, you know, that they are also a Zoho user and they use Zoho manufacturing uh, platform in future, right? You know, Salman was selling that in, uh, soon we are going to have a, a manufacturer, uh, a software built for manufacturer and uh, currently we don't have an option to go and track that information uh, whatever we have is to extract the content from the document and to create bills i hope i answered your question tiffany can zoho inventory integrates with mit onboarding or salesforce or shopify Salman. Um, oh, yeah, yeah, I can take this up. Uh, so I'm just uh, looking at, can, can you explain more about MIT onboarding, um, uh, Emily? Because uh, we do integrate with uh, Shopify and Salesforce integration is right now available uh, through a third party connector uh, called uh, Cart Rover. So Zoho Inventory does integrate with Salesforce uh, through uh, Cart Rover. Now, but we directly integrate with uh, Zoho CRM, which is our flagship product, which is a, which is a very, uh, which is a very much an alternative to the Salesforce. And uh, when it comes to Shopify, yes, we do integrate uh, with Shopify directly. So it's a plug and play kind of an integration where you can uh, directly um, put up your information and connect your uh, Zoho inventory with your Shopify. So this helps you connect your items. Uh, you'll be able to track your um, stock quantity. You'll be able to manage all your sales orders uh, that's coming from Shopify. Uh, you can update your delivery details and so on. It'll be all automatically triggered from Zoho. So yeah, Zoho Inventory closely integrates with Shopify and Salesforce is a third-party integration, but we do. And if you could uh, if you could elaborate a little, a little about MIT onboarding, is this about an HR app? Awesome, uh, thank you, Emily. So if you have any questions 
uh, more than this, do feel free to let me know. Uh, you can, you can all can send us an email to. Uh, so, let, let, can you, Murugan, can you change the slides, or should I take over, or so that I can change it? You know, maybe if anybody wants to note down the email address, it should be really helpful for them. So, yeah, I'm going to take control. Sure, please go ahead. So, okay, awesome. All right, so I'm going to display that slide over here. Uh, so everybody can keep a note of this email address in case if you have any questions uh, more than this. Uh, and I mean, if at all, at a later point, but anything right now, we'll clear it over here right now. Shouldn't be a problem. Uh, sure, uh, Emily, we can help you with the material for the Shopify and Salesforce integration boot. Uh, all you have to do is just drop an email to support at zohoinventory.com and we will uh, be able to give you the details or else you can simply search for uh, Zoho and uh, Shopify integration, Zoho Inventory and Shopify integration on Google and uh, you can directly find the you know, YouTube video for that. So we have a YouTube video which explains the complete uh, details on this integration. All you have to do is just search for our YouTube page for Zoho Inventory. Uh, you can land up over there and you can find that video or you can also search in our help docs. We do have a fully, uh, you know, fully uh, explained, self-explanatory self help doc over there, which will guide you through. So any questions for Murugapan today? Uh, because uh, I believe anything related to AI and uh, automation on AI, I'm sorry, I will not be the guy. So we will have to go for it. Uh, we have the expert in house. So uh, the, on the house today. So yeah, we have any, just drop them here. We can clear it off right now. Uh, we'll we'll uh, go for another two more minutes. Uh, so I believe uh, session was scheduled for one hour. Uh, we have we are now at one hour six minutes. So uh, I believe you know we all might have other uh, commitments too. So yeah, let's make sure we stick to the timeline so we can extend it by another two to three more minutes max. Oh, by the way, um, um, do you have a approval workflow or something in in place? Because Zoho does have an approval workflow, but uh, do you have anything on your end uh, as such? Uh, in Captish, we have a customizable workflow which we okay. can uh, customize it. Uh, yeah. But you know, with, with this integration, we actually doesn't require any customizable workflow as of now. But again, you know, based on the needs and ask of the customer, we can we can do that. Awesome. All right. I guess that answers my question. Yeah. So you were saying about uh, the way um, you know that. The details are being extracted from a mail inbox, right? You do do your product can achieve that sort of an integration with a mailbox, right? Right. 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 So, actually, say from the same. Uh, let let me let me think. Let, let, let me put it like this. You know, uh, so if I have a vendor, um, you know, I do receive a lot of promotional emails as well, being in their uh, mailer list. So, how do we go with that? Is there a is there a way that we can identify what is a promotion email or what is a vendor bill something like is there anything like that exactly see we have an uh, uh, intelligent feature there to classify the documents right uh -huh. and we listen to an uh, inbox based on the configuration and we listen to all the um, emails but we look into all the emails but um, we our, our program can classify the documents and identify the vendor invoices rightly and only those documents will be fetched for extraction. And we will ignore all the emails. Yes, God, it is an intelligent feature to classify these documents. OK, OK. So similarly, we can um, mention about, we, we can uh, help it uh, to learn about PO and in, and bill separately. So even let's say if a PO is coming in, it doesn't, it doesn't have it, it, it will not have it uh, you know, mixed up with the PO or bill and doesn't get confused, right? No, it, it will not. Okay. It will exactly so fit have a the document form list. Form. Yes, that, that, that's what the, you know, the training module is all about, right? The, exactly. the administrator yeah, comes and trains the system based on the training it understand, okay, the, uh, the what document it has to capture. Got it, got you, got you. Right. So I guess, uh, I let let's then wind up the session. Uh, I mean, I I've got uh, I've asked most of my questions what I had in mind for you. Uh, so it looks like our users also had a, a nice session here, and of course it was really really insightful. Uh, I mean, even I did learn a lot of new things uh, from this session. In fact, I mean, um, you know, 
So I, I didn't know about AI and ML. I'm not like I didn't know about it, but then you know I was not really an in-depth guy into that. So yeah, it did help me as well a lot to understand about this about a little about AI and ML. So uh, well, uh, thank you, um, Murugappan, for joining us, uh, providing all this all this information uh, f- with me and uh, all our users today, uh, all our uh, prospective users today who might be looking forward to uh, you know join us, join our products to understand to leverage our uh, technology to you know make their lives easier so um uh, and thank you all for to all our users here we uh, we thank you for spending your time with us today so if you have any more questions do feel free to call in call into these numbers or you can directly drop us an email we will uh, get back to you with all the answers so we'll be signing off um and uh, again thank you all Thank you very much and have a wonderful day. Thanks, Salman. Everybody have a wonderful day. For this hosting. Okay. Thank, Thank you. you. Bye-bye. Thank you. Bye.